welcome back to another fall between the pages video i'm autumn vera and thank you once again so much for joining me so this video is actually going to be a little bit different instead of me going through one book at a time for book reviews i want to go over some of the books that i've read within the past couple of months um from like february to april so yeah, like the past two months, I'll go over those reads and I'm going to see if I can do it within 15 minutes or less. So yeah, so I think I have maybe like 10 to 8 books that I'm going to go through. So let's see if I can do this. To start us off with, I am going to discuss The Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. Now, I have not read other books by Lisa Jewell before. I do have another book on her shelf, but I haven't gotten to it yet. But The Invisible Girl was actually really intriguing. It tells the story of a girl who is not that popular but she is a teenager just going about her regular life and then she ends up disappearing and you find out through her side of the story and the other character side of the story that she has intersected with them at one point or another and now you're trying to figure out who actually kidnapped her killed her or something you don't know what has happened you get little bits of information with each chapter and i did like the mystery kept growing with each step. One of the things I did enjoy about this book was Sapphire's character. She is a very romantic type of character. She is going on 16, I think 17 years old in this book. And she's just going about her regular day life. And even though there's not much going on in her life per se, she likes people watching. <laughs> but this ends up causing trouble because other people that she's watching have secrets of their own. So I was very intrigued by this book. However, I did want more from it. The ending left me so disappointed. <laughs> and if you know what had happened, comment down below because I don't know why she decided, like it just ruined the whole effect of the book. If you're going to lead it up to either she got kidnapped or murdered, then lead it up to one of those. But in the end, that's not what happened. And so I gave this book, I think four stars because it was a really good read in between, but at the end, it was kind of a letdown. So if you guys have not read or have read The Invisible Girl, let me know in the comments down below. All right, so the next book that I read that was kind of like a mystery type thriller is Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Now this book, <laughs> I thought it was going to be, oh my gosh, this is this is one of those you know, traps, you can't escape. There's a murderer trying to kill everybody, but the excitement died within like the first few chapters. And I'll tell you why, because the main character of the story, Mila, goes through life and something tragic has happened in her past. She was known for snowboarding. She and some of her friends that she had made from years before were on the track to the Olympics for snowboarding but something tragic occurred and their past is now coming back to haunt them and I wanted so much more from this book and it did not deliver I actually rated this book a three because I that's how much I didn't like the story <laughs> and you can understand a little bit why as I get into it you have Mila and the other friends are called back it's like one of those summer type thriller movies where they haven't seen each other for years they're called back to the spot of the incident and now someone is out to get them playing mind games with them and that's basically what this book is about they go to a ski lift they get to the lodge nobody is there the ski lift is broken and now they're stuck but someone is playing with their minds and it all has to do with this girl who had disappeared years ago they don't know if she's dead or if she is actually the one playing tricks on them and I was really disappointed with the ending because the character that you thought it was actually going to be screwing with them was not the killer and I was like well this doesn't really make sense why why would she be the killer there was no hint throughout this entire book that she was the killer and yeah it was just a major letdown like I said I wanted more from this book but it did not deliver and unfortunately it ended up being one of those reads where I was just like well that was a waste of time so if you guys have actually read this book unfortunately I could see what the author was doing 
but it did not execute well. So if you guys have actually read the book, let me know what you thought about Mila and the other characters. The next book that I'm going to discuss is Romanoff and that one is actually centering on Anastasia and her family during the time when there was the revolt against the Tsar and you have her and her family are now stuck in a house basically prisoners until they figure out what they want to do with them and in this story of Romanov and Anastasia let me just say is one of my favorite stories and historical stories that I ever followed and so in the book Romanov it does center on Anastasia and the Romanov family and what has actually happened to them there is a lot of historical key points placed into the book itself but then it's also tied into magic you have a magic system in this world where people can weave magic they can go through time they can either write magic scripts they can do several different things and because they have magic they are now deemed threats and people are hunted so you have this war-torn world being like pulled apart at the seams and Anastasia just trying to keep her family together trying to keep them from getting killed all while hiding that she possesses a bottle of such of magic and it really is a adventure type tale but unfortunately it is slow paced there's not much that goes on until the last couple of chapters and unfortunately at this point I kind of lost interest and I was just kind of skipping through it because I was just looking at this and trying to see well I could see where they were going but unfortunately again this is another book that did not execute well and I wanted so much more. So with Romanoff I believe I gave it like three stars after I had finished reading it and if you guys have read the book love the story of Anastasia love the history behind everything let me know what you actually thought of this book and what were your thoughts on the magic system because I thought there was going to be more magic than what it was. And there was like little bits of magic so I was very disappointed <laughs> um, but the ending turned out to be a little bit better than I expected which is why I gave it three stars and not two. The next book that I want to talk about is A Curious Beginning. This was actually a great surprise to me that I would enjoy this book so much. It is about a young woman who has made a name for herself by hunting insects mainly butterflies and because she has no more family that's how the story starts one of her family members dies and she ends up being kidnapped right after or an attempted kidnap and now she is off to London trying to figure out who she is what's happening and she meets this strange um I would say taxidermist <laughs> in a way because he goes on explorations but now he's a taxidermist. The partnership between these two was very interesting to me. I really love the characters. Um, the story does start off slow but as you get more into it it really picks off and she ends up being surprisingly a really important character in this series and so I gave this book I think about a four for just the tension for just the story itself and because I really enjoyed the humor <laughs> and the sassiness that the main character had. So if you read A Curious Beginning, let me know what you think about the series because I am definitely going to read more of it. The next book that I want to get to is Cinderella is Dead. Unfortunately, I did not like this book at all. The main girl, Sophia, she is in this world, this town, where women are essentially given a ball, but men of all ages choose which one they want for their wife and they can actually have more than one. It's pretty disgusting misogynistic type of world that this is set in and of course this is centered on her trying to win her freedom, trying to wake people up from this Cinderella-like fairy tale and this is actually what they go on for their history. Cinderella was saved by the prince. Cinderella was picked up from a life of poverty and given the dream that every woman wants. And while I like the premise of the story, I like the overall plot line, the story itself was not good. <laughs> and I actually wanted more of Sophia and the young guy that she was introduced to in the first two, in the first couple of chapters to actually go about and search for a way to take down the king. And that didn't happen. You introduce this great character that could be well developed in the story and then you take them from out of the story. Why? exactly was that happening so 
it just blew my mind that that occurred and I was just like okay maybe I'll see him in the rest of the book and no you don't see him in the rest of the book he's just gone until the very end and Sophia in herself was a very annoying character I didn't like her at all she's just dead set on what she wants to do and although she's determined she does not really see she has blindfolders on basically she doesn't really see what's going on around her how her actions are affecting other people she just wants what she wants and that's the bottom line and so when she actually gets to the middle of the storyline she meets another character who is from the uh, wicked stepsister side of the family and she's their descendant and I was like oh Charlotte she could be the main character why wasn't she made the main character because her character was more interesting her story development was more interesting than Sophia Sophia had no story development no character development nothing she just went from point a to point b to point c and that was it that was it and I was just like I don't like this book I don't the romance between the two characters Sophia and Charlotte could have been developed a little bit more it was like you put these two characters together and boom they're automatically in love i don't like insta love between two characters like that it makes me upset because there is no progression there is no key point to where oh hey you have these two characters mean they like these certain things about each other but no it's just like oh yeah sophia i like you because you're so determined and I've never met anyone like you before. No, Sophia has nothing going on for her. So yeah, Cinderella is not dead. Although the artwork is beautiful, it was not a great story and I gave it a two. So if you've actually read the book, let me know your comments below. Why did you like it? Why did you not like it? Did you like Sophia better than Charlotte? Did you like the storyline at all? Just let me know because that, it, to me, it just seemed all over the place. Um, and I know the author is just coming out with another book based on a secret garden called A Poison Heart. So if you guys are actually going to read that or if you already read it, the art, let me know what you thought of the story. I'll probably look into it once it goes like maybe to the $2 line on Kindle and see how it is. All right, so the next book on my list is Malice. Malice is actually one of the books that just recently came out, but I read this back in February as an art and I absolutely love the story. So with the book Malice is a dark retelling of the story of Sleeping Beauty and it centers on dark fae named Alice who falls basically in love with the princess Aurora. And you have it where Aurora is cursed to die. And instead of the sleeping spell, she is cursed to die from not finding her true love. And it has passed on from generations to generations. And in order to find her true love, she has to go through different suitors. And so on Alice's part, she is a dark fae. She is living with light fae. And nobody in the town of Briar loves her. They absolutely hate her guts because she is dark fae. They actually took her in, did all these tests to her, and she is trying to grow up to not be the monster that people say she is. And I absolutely love her character because she had death to her. She actually had struggles that she was going through. She had a story development that was expanded upon. And I love this classic retelling of the story of Sleeping Beauty because you got to see a side of what's supposed to be the villain of the story and what everyone else chooses their history to be. And so I was intrigued by the story. It was well developed. I gave this a four stars because I was hoping the ending would be a little bit better than what I thought it would be and that Alice and Aurora would end up together. But in a way they did just not in what I was expecting so if you actually like the story of Malice let me know your thoughts below I think the two characters were great together um I did want more romance from it than what there was it was like you know spotty here and there um but still a well-developed story this I believe is a duology so I'm looking forward to book two so the next book that's down my list is of course another thriller it's called if i disappear and this one i read as an arc and i did as part of a book blog tour and i unfortunately wanted more from the story and it did not give me that it did not give me that 
you have a character who is obsessed with a crime show podcast and when her favorite podcaster goes missing she travels off to go find out what happened now of course her life is in shambles she's divorced she doesn't have a family who really she can depend on she is not someone who completes a task fully and yet you have her uprooting her life and driving halfway around the country to go figure out what happened to her favorite podcaster because she hadn't uploaded episodes within like the past couple of weeks. Now, of course, to the person reading, like myself, this seems absolutely bonkers. Why are you going to do this? And I never fully understood where her obsession came from. Why was this character so obsessed with crime shows? Why would she even stay in this town that's creepy as mess and you have people lying to you back and forth? And she herself is not a good liar. She does not present herself well to other people. She fumbles over things. She makes it seem like, oh yeah, I'm doing this. I'm deep undercover. Nobody can guess who I am and what I'm here for. But you basically saying, did you kill her to everybody you meet? So it was a little bit of a rocky road for me as I was just reading through the book itself, trying to piece everything together. And once I thought the character did, of course, maybe she had a schizophrenic uh, split personality. Maybe she's the girl who's self and she, you know, had amnesia. I was trying to figure it out all down the line, the list of everything, of all the possibilities. And of course, I was just shocked when the truth came out and I was just like this this doesn't really connect you have too many different directions of where you wanted the story to go and then at the end it doesn't make sense so I gave this book a three <laughs> unfortunately even though it was part of a book blog tour I was just like I, mm, this book wasn't really for me I'm sorry it's a three I I did in my questions ask the author if this book was going to be continued and I think they responded with no it was just one book or maybe they just don't know yet so I was just like oh okay all right that's cool I guess so it just left me really unsatisfied with the story itself and yeah I gave it I gave it a three um I would have given it lower but the guessing back and forth of what could have possibly happened kind of amped up the story a little bit just a little not a lot but yeah it just if you guys read the book let me know your thoughts and what you think the author should have done for the ending because to me it didn't seem like that great of an ending but that's just me the next book on my list to give a review for is Slay I did this as an audiobook and I kind of wish I hadn't. I love the artwork of the cover but at the same time the story was just a little bit too much. Like I love the story overall the premise of how you have a young teenager who created this game world for herself a place for people of color like her to meet converge play out different fantasies and empower themselves with gameplay and I think for just anyone that's awesome because in a lot of video games you don't have different skin tones you can do and I love video games with customization that is key and so I was very intrigued by the story itself and then how she is confronted when something goes wrong and her game is blamed for being violent when the game is condemned and she is feeling the pressure to come forward to tell her truth that part of the story was really cut down because you don't see the real world complications that came with it you don't see her going through the different motions of trying to fight and let people know this game has made an impact now you see other people's perceptions of the game in the story itself and then at that part i got confused i was just like why are you displaying other people's perception of the game i mean i get it you want to show the reader how other people are being impacted but at the same time that could have came through comments that could have came through the video game itself that could have game came through her like saying that hey i am the developer the creator of the game and then people actually sending her love 
or something but you didn't have to tell it through different narratives because at that point I think the story got confusing and it brought it down instead of bringing it up and then you also didn't have like I said the real world implications of what happens when she does say that oh this is me I'm the story developer I'm the game developer and then the news just you know or people themselves the society trying to say oh a teen made a violent game nothing of that nature happens she doesn't really stand up for herself at the end so I am just hoping for that if there is another book like this that it will actually center on what happens in the aftermath of you know real world relations of what will actually happen if somebody were to be confronted with this because that was not in the book at all it was like really cut towards the end so if you guys actually read the book let me know your thoughts below if you liked it if you didn't like it if you wish slay was an actual video game because i would play it shoot i would dress myself up as storm and play the game <laughs> but yeah let me know in the comments down below what you thought of Slay I think I gave this like three stars because it just it was just missing a lot of key plot holes that I wish were covered all right guys so those are my eight reviews for this video um I probably wanted to do 10 but I don't think there are any other video any other books that I wanted to get to the ones that I do want to talk about I think I'm going to do individually so those are my eight so let's see at the end of this video if I make it to 15 minutes or not because I don't, I don't know if I did. Maybe I barely made it. Maybe I barely made it. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the reviews. If you agree with anything, disagree with anything. If you like some of the books and you want to talk about their character development story, I am down for all of that. So yeah, let's follow along with this conversation in the comments down below. And I will check you guys out in the next video. Bye.